This video is about linear law and coordinate geometry. In part A of this question, we have a diagram of vertical axis of y minus x and horizontal axis of x squared over y. A straight line graph of AB is drawn to represent this equation of y squared equals to hx squared plus y open brackets k plus x close brackets where both h and k are constants. Given that the line passes through the first pair of coordinates to be half comma three and a second pair of coordinates to be two comma five, find the value of h and of k. And that's a four marks question. In part b of the same questions, if the diagram from part a over here is being drawn to a scale on a graph paper, find the equation of a suitable straight line which should be added to the graph in order to find the value of x for which h plus 2 plus ky over x squared is equal to 5y over x squared. And that's a 2 marks question. In the last part c of this question, ef is a normal to the line ab at point e with coordinates of 6 comma p. EF intersects the x-axis at F, where P is a constant. A horizontal line meets AB at C and EF at D. ACEB as well as EDF are straight lines. In C part 1 of this question, you are to find the value of acute angle ECD. And that's a two marks question. In C part two, find the value of P, which is part of the coordinates of E. In the last part of C part three, in this case, find the coordinates of F, and that's a three marks question. You might want to pause this video to give this question a try, and when you're ready, keep watching. In part A of this question, we are given a diagram on the right hand side where the vertical axis is the y minus x instead of the usual y axis and the horizontal axis is the x squared over y instead of the usual x axis. Now since both axes are very much different from the usual coordinate geometry questions, this is obviously a linear law question. Now let's go back to our linear law formulas. Now, in this case, if you are to convert any non-linear equation to a linear equation, and a linear equation must be expressed in this form. Capital Y equals to M capital X plus C. Now, throughout this video over here, our Y, which is highlighted in yellow, refers to the variable on the vertical axis. So, the variable on the vertical axis is therefore a Y minus X. So, this is our um, highlighted in yellow, our variable on the vertical axis. And highlighted in green, the capital X refers to the variable on the horizontal axis. And in this question, it is referring to x squared over y. M highlighted in blue refers to the gradients. And C is the vertical intercepts. So these three colors is very important because it will be commonly used throughout for your easy referencing later on. Then the next part, for gradients, we have y minus y1 over x minus x1 is equal to M, referring to the gradient formula rise over runs. Now please take note because this is not a x comma y system now. This in this case um it's now a yellow color. In this case it's a y minus x. So this y must be replaced as a y minus x and this x must now be replaced as a x square over y later on in order for us to find the gradients. Now let's move on to the last part. The coordinates will also be very much different. So in the past in the coordinate geometry you usually have an x comma y now we have it as the greens comma yellow. So x squared over y comma y minus x. Now with these few points in mind, let's go on to the solution for part A. So over here in part A, um, we are given a very strange equations. All right. And we are also given two pairs of coordinates. And these two pairs of coordinates must be points on this on the diagram here. And of course, this line of AB passes these two points, these two points over here, which is somewhere around here. All right. Um, 
So what happens is that what we can do is to use the vertical axis and the horizontal axis as well as finding the gradients to form an equation so that we can compare against this non-linear equation over here. All right, so with that in mind, I'm going to use the gradient formula. So clearly, the vertical variable is therefore a y minus x minus the wave 5. I'm using this point here, 5, all right, over the horizontal variable of x squared over y in greens minus the wave 2 using this point. And on the right-hand side is equals to the gradient of this, 5 minus 3 over 2 minus half. Now over here to the next steps, we have this part. Making the vertical variable the subject, making the yellow component the subject over here. So um, this blue color gradient can be key into a calculator to give us a 4 thirds. So 4 thirds times the x squared over y. So this part, I leave it as its form. So the yellow and greens must be left as its form in this case for easy manipulation later on. So this is like your capital Y equals to M capital X plus C. Now clearly you can tell that the C, the vertical intercept in this case is 7 thirds. All right, so what do we have next over here? Now, as we can see here, even though this is a linear equation in this uh, coordinate geometry of y minus x against x squared over y, we are given a non-linear equation over here. So what we can do is we either convert this equation into this form or convert this equation into the form in the question. All right, I figure out it should be easier if it converts this equation to the form given in the question because all we need to do is to multiply by y throughout. So multiplying by y throughout to give us a y square, multiplying by y throughout over here will give us a xy, shipping to the right becomes here. Multiplying by y throughout, we now have a 4 third x square, and multiplying by y throughout, we now have a 7 third y. Now I'm expressing in this form, as we can see here, we have a y square on the left, as per the questions, and we have a 4 third x square, we have a coefficient of x square, h, to be a 4 third, we can do a comparison. Now for the remaining two terms over here, they express it as a factor of y, they factor out y. So over here, let's factor out y so that we can express it in this form. So factoring out y, in this case, would be 7 thirds plus x, close the parentheses like this. Now what's going to happen is we're going to compare these two equations as you can see here. Alright, if you compare these two equations, we can clearly tell that the coefficient of x squared in my answer is a 4 thirds, in the question is a h, so h must be a 4 thirds. And over here, y open brackets 7 thirds plus x, now the k must obviously be a 7 thirds. And that's the answer for part a of this question. Moving on to part b of this question, we are supposed to find the equation of a suitable straight line we should be added on to this graph such that we can find the value of x for which this whole equation is equal to 5y over x squared. Now, before we start doing anything, as we can see here, this two part A and part B, they are related. So it's part C later on. Now we are to replace the value of h of 4 thirds and k of 7 thirds into this equation. So writing out the equation, we have this part. So 4 thirds plus 2 plus 7 thirds y over x squared equals to 5y over x squared. Now the idea about this equation is that we are to convert this equation to the straight line in part A, which is this equation that my cursor is hovering over here right now. So what we can see is that um, we have a 4 thirds and this is the telltale sign here. Now the 4 thirds must be the gradient, all right? So the 4 thirds is gradient. So what is it lacking of? It's actually lacking of x squared over y. So this is a telltale sign, this is a hint given to us, we need to pick up this hint. So multiplying by x squared over y throughout the entire equation, we therefore have this part. So multiplying by x squared over y to the left, and multiplying by x squared over y to the right. And after we do a simple expansion, 4 third x squared over y, and uh, 4 third is a blue gradient, and x squared over y is a vertical, uh, var a horizontal variable in this case. All right, so obviously we have this form right now. At the same time, if you multiply the x squared over y to the 2, it's not found anywhere in this equation. We do not want that. Anything we don't want, we push it to the right-hand side. So it becomes a negative 2x squared over y here. Now, x squared over y multiplied by 7y over 3x squared, we actually have a 7 over 3, which is the vertical intercept that we found earlier in part A. And of course, over here on the right-hand side, if you do a simple expansion, it should actually give us a 5. 
Now, as you can see here, um, 4 third x squared over y plus 7 third is actually the right-hand side of the linear equation that we formed earlier. So that means to say this must therefore be a y minus x. Replacing the left-hand side of this equation to be a y minus x, we therefore have this part. Now, as you can see here, um, over here, the horizontal axis is the x squared over y, so we have it in green. Now, the negative 2 here must therefore be the gradient, and the 5 must therefore be the vertical the set. So once again, we have another one, another straight line equation, y minus x equals to negative 2, which is the gradient, and the horizontal axis is the x squared over y, plus 5, which is the vertical the set in this form. So... This is the equation of the next suitable straight line in part B of this question. In the last part of this question in part C, we are given two extra lines. All right, CD is a horizontal line that is parallel to the horizontal axis of x squared over y, and EF is a line that is normal to AB. All right, EF intersects not the x axis, but the x squared over y axis at point f. So I certainly believe that this is a typing error from the original school questions over here. All right, so EF should be intersecting the x squared over y axis at f. All right, and you are told that P is a constant. In C part 1, we have to find the value of acute angle ECD. So this is acute angle ECD. Now, obviously, this is an acute angle. Now, before we find any angles in this uh, quadrant geometry questions or linear law question here, let's recap on how do we find tangent theta to be a gradient. So we have a formula here, which is gradient is the same as tangent theta because tangent theta is known to be toi, opposite, which is the change in vertical, over the adjacent, which is the change in horizontal. So gradient is also known to be tangent theta. Now, with this in mind, as well as our part A solution, the purple box over here. I only needed this. This equation of AB, all right? This is from your part A solution earlier. So tangent ECD, all right? Tangent theta, which is the required angle of ECD over here, all right? Will therefore be the same as the gradient of AB. Now, the gradient of AB we found earlier in blue to be a four-thirds. Now, finding angle ECD will therefore be taking a tangent inverse of 4 thirds, giving us a 0 0.927 radians, and that's the answer for C part 1. Now in C part 2 is a, another short question, so you have to find the value of P, all right? And P is embedded within the E coordinates. Now, E lies on the line of AB, all right? E lies on the line of AB. Now, since we have the AB equation, why not replace the E point, all right, the E coordinates over here to be a 6, P into this equation over here. So replacing 6, P here, all right, take notes, it's no longer X, Y. What students make uh, common mistakes for um, throughout my last 10 years of teaching is that to replace the X to be a 6 and Y to be a P conveniently. Take note, please do not make this common mistakes. Your vertical and horizontal axis are now very different. You are supposed to be replacing 6 into the green color, x squared over y, all right, and replacing p into the yellow color of y minus x because your coordinates are very different right now. So replacing that, you now have your p to be this value and key into our calculator will therefore give us 10 and 1 thirds. And that's the answer for C part 2. Now moving on to C part 3 of this question, we are asked to find the coordinates of f. So where is point f? Point f lies on the line of EF. In order for us to find point f, we need to find the equation of EF. And in order for us to find the equation of EF, we first need to form, number one, a gradient. Number two, coordinates of E. Now, we obviously found what is P, so we obviously know what is our coordinates of E. So we have one pair of coordinates, but we are still lacking of the gradients. So let's not forget that EF is a normal to AB. So when we say EF is a normal to AB, we are referring to it as a perpendicular line. So if two lines are perpendicular to each other, then the product of their gradients will therefore be equal to negative 1. So this is yet another formula from the current geometry chapter in our AMF. So moving on to the next part in C part 3. In order for us to find the equation of EF over here, 
Now, as you can see, um, my capital Y, which is the vertical uh, axis variable, which is Y minus X in yellow, minus away 31 over 3. Now, where is this 31 over 3 from? This 31 over 3 is actually from the P because this is actually the variable here within this coordinate. I'm using this, co this coordinates of E. So this straight line of EF passes through E. So I'm using this coordinates. And over the Green's variable, in this case is X squared over Y, minus away 6, all right? Minus away 6 equals to the gradient on the right. So the gradient of EF can be found by having a negative 1 divided by the gradient of AB. And the gradient of AB previously was a 4 thirds. So the whole of this right-hand side of this equation um, can be keyed into a calculator and simplify it to give us a negative 3 quarter over here as a gradient. Now, expressing it once again in a linear line equations, all right, linear, linear line equation over here. So um, yellow equals to gradients times greens plus vertical intercept like this. All right, so what happens is we want to find the coordinates of F. Now, F intersects the horizontal axis, which means to say we need to set Y minus X, the one in yellow, to be a zero. Setting Y minus X to be a zero and solving for X squared over Y. We are not solving for X, please take note, we are solving for X squared over Y because of the axis. Solving for X squared over Y will therefore give us a 19 and 7 over 9. Now, that is the answer for coordinates of F. 19, 7 over 9, comma, 0. And that's the answer for C, part 3 of this question. Once again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something again. And see you in the next episode of Practical Math.